micro win is what we're going to be talking about today and it's going to be a fun one so a, a micro wins what we use to make isos in windows uh much like nt light and some other things so it's it's a something i've been kind of working on a little bit but i need to fine tune it a bit more also have a lot of other stuff to talk about today when it comes to youtube and many other little uh article stuff so we'll probably uh, start off the stream with some some articles and some other stuff. Let me pull up chat here. How's it going, Yaz? Oh man, so, such a fun one. Uh, let's just whew, pull that in. This wonderful Tuesday had a little chilly here. A little chilly. Uh, we had uh, freezing temps. Uh, it's actually still below freezing here in Texas, which is rare for us. Everyone's losing their mind, which is hilarious. But uh, <laughs> just because I'm coming from the Midwest. But uh, yeah, should should be fun. Should be fun today. I've had got, got a little off kilter today just because uh, did a bunch of video edits and. I've been churning out a ton of videos lately. I've been averaging, I think, like 1.3 videos a day <laughs> between all channels and such. So I've been like a, just a video making machine. And then I still got uh, the day job where we're moving. Uh, we're going to be moving this next month. So that's going to be interesting as well. I'm doing pretty fantastic today. I got to say, uh, it should be fun. Had some snow today in the Netherlands, so oh, it doesn't happen a lot anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know, it used to snow a lot uh, more when I was a kid, but obviously I was up in Kansas. But even then, I, I don't even think uh, I still have some family up there, and it still doesn't snow as quite as much as it used to. But that's okay. I hate cold weather, so <laughs> I'm like, ah. Uh. Microwin. Uh, I think we had a, a chat in the somebody in chat asking what Microwin was. It's an ISO creation tool, part of the Chris Titus Tech Windows toolbox. So we're, we'll be uh, we'll we'll be going up to that, checking that out as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, for basic coding, I saw one. I think this is a tweet or something a while back, and it made my brain hurt. Somebody was like, "I have to have a Mac to do programming," and I'm like, "What?" You can use a potato running Linux and code pretty much anything and everything. Hell, you can use a little Raspberry Pi. Look, like a Raspberry Pi. This is my new Raspberry Pi 5. We got to do a stream. Maybe Thursday stream we do Raspberry Pi 5. Because I need to update Titus Pi and redo uh, that whole image. Well, I guess we should fix this ISO. I think that was the whole purpose of the stream, huh? Should we boot it up? I think we should. Let's see what we have. I think we have to make some big changes here. Let's fetch. Uh, let's go main branch. I think I changed out the branch here. Oh, maybe I didn't. It looks like we just got the test branch. Well, let's go to GitHub. We spent 42 minutes on nothing. Welcome to my streams. It is not uncommon to spend 42 minutes on nothing. It's actually not uncommon for me to spend two hours on nothing. Sometimes I sit there and stare at code and go, well, I'm going to do all this. And then at the end of the stream, I'm like, damn, it probably would have been better if none of this happened. <laughs> I think I'm in a worse spot than when I started the stream. <laughs> yeah, that happens too. Yeah, just the way it rolls. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of people. Okay, we got to address the elephant in the room. I've already addressed this a bunch, but let's just address it one more time. Yes, I am on Thorium. Get over it. <laughs> that's, that's all I got to say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, maybe I could I could maybe pass it off to people and say I'm on Chromium. <laughs> you know, well, we could. Uh, let's see. What, what are the branches here? Let's make sure we're on 115. Okay, great. We double check the branches. Looking good. We already got a couple pull requests. Oh, Lordy. We have Conti. Every time Conti makes a pull request, it's like, holy balls. Oh, let's see. Okay. <clears throat> some read me all right not 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 the worst did you guys know about the when doing it from the search launch method windows key powershell or terminal control shift enter 
Eh, you know, I didn't even know about that hotkey. Sweet. Uh, what else we got? Automation. Get installed. Settings and export. Anaconda 3. Anaconda is a distribution of Python and R programming language. Okay. Never used it. Uh, we have clip grab. Uh, okay. That's kind of... Uh, well, this looks kind of funky. Clip grab, clip grab. This doesn't look like the proper code commit. It's mixing those guys up. Okay. Um, hmm. That's, uh, yeah, that's all kinds of jacked up. All right. We'll have to look. We might have to actually check this PR out. It looks like we're going to have to uh, fix some of this. Um, that looks good. Get installed. Settings export. Looks like a, a wiki. Uh, it's kind of cool. Conti's redoing the wiki here on WinUtil. Bringing it in-house. Um, let's just fix this section, and then the rest of it looks fine. Uh, let's... Have you guys used review and code base? This is kind of funky, too. So what I'm going to grab, we'll just go into... Uh, da, da, da. We need to pull the do the pull request, and we're gonna grab Conti's PR. We'll fetch it, and then we are going to modify, modify this. Now I want to look at that clip grab. Is that really a thing? Ah, so it is. So it is. So you got video moss. You got FFmpeg. That's so weird. I wonder what happened here. Let's look at YouTube DLP. Maybe that's uh, duplicated as well. Okay. So clip grab right here is just labeled incorrectly. So we'll go YouTube DLP, video mass, cross-platform GUI for FFmpeg. That sounds cool. I'm gonna have to check out video mass. Anybody ever use that? I don't know. Oh, yeah, Peter. Windows again. I've been just living in Windows, man. And then we also have FFmpeg. Where's where's FFmpeg? You know, a lot of people don't realize this, though. Like, even though when I'm in Windows, man, I'm telling... I think every advanced power user that has only used Windows out there, right? Any advanced power user that watches this uses Windows... I think you have to be in Linux for an entire year and try to convert completely over there. And for that entire year, use nothing but FOSS tools. If you use Photoshop, force yourself to use GIMP. If you use Microsoft Office, you force yourself to use like Libre Office or Open Office. Uh, just convert everything. I, for editing, I go from using... Well, no, you just just stick to just use DaVinci Resolve. Let's not get go too crazy. But do this right. Every single advanced power user in Windows, if you've never done it, do it and do it for like an entire year. You can do it. It's just going to be a lot of pain and suffering. But at the end of it, move back to Windows. Right. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. I know. I wait, wait, wait. Get don't throw the tomatoes yet. You will find you use Windows in entire new ways that makes you so much of a better user and just a much, just have a whole new arsenal of tools at your disposal that it's just amazing. So then it doesn't even matter if you're in Windows or Linux, you're just like, hell yeah, let's get it. And you're, you're just so much faster, more productive, and just have a higher skill set than if you just stayed in Windows. I think everyone, now some people are going to move to Linux and just stay there. And that's just, they're just going to be like, this is my forever home. Totally get that. That's awesome. But even if you go back, it's not wasted time. I think a lot of people think, ah, oh, if I go over to Linux and I spend six months or a year over there, uh, I just, just wasted if I go back to Windows. No, not at all. It is wild how much FOSS programs and a lot of the Linux ideology has come to Windows. Hell, my old toolbox, this whole thing that we're building here, it wouldn't exist if I hadn't done that and hadn't been on Linux. 
it's wild how cool and how much of the skills you can develop in Linux that you could never do if you only stayed in Windows. Uh, it's just something I, I highly recommend everyone doing. And, and uh, I will die on this hill. <laughs> uh, yeah, the pain of which I felt when observing that all you could do, uh, all those things in Windows too, and didn't see it. And that's the thing. Like when I first moved to Linux, I was like, I just can't do this. I just, I, I, I did this this way in Windows and it just, it, I, I can't do it that way in Linux. And it forced me to adapt. It forced me to get a bigger skill set. It forced me to, to learn. And, oh, God, I'm just so much more alive. I feel amazing. It makes you a better person. It really does. You should use Linux. Anyways, back to Windows. <laughs> uh, will you stick to Firefox now? Oh, no. Somebody tell Peter what happened. I'm, I'm not going to repeat myself a third time on stream. <laughs> Oh, oh man, it's so great. <laughs> I'm back on Thorium. <laughs> I know it is what it is. Oh gosh! All right, let's go FFmpeg. Let's see what we got. FFmpeg. Oh yeah. So whatever happened to Clip Grab? I guess Clip Grab's not there anymore. Maybe we need to add clip grab. I don't even know what clip grab is. So let's let's take a look. What is clip grab? Downloading YouTube videos. Is there a GitHub? Where's the GitHub? GitHub. See an executable. Donate support. Is it open source? I don't see it being open source. It might just end up in the garbage bin. Yeah, clip grab GitHub maybe. Let's let's see. Clip grab GitHub. Freedom bin. All right. Oh, it's a it's a front end for uh YouTube DL. Although YouTube DL is uh, deprecated, is it not? Or depreciated? Uh, deprecated, depreciated. I always mix those two up. I always get a comment about it too. Um. Oh, uh, it's not been updated in two years. Ooh, dude, most of this is like 11 years old, too. Yeesh. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we're going to leave Kip, uh, Clip Grab out. Uh, it, really, it really should be YouTube DL is really where most of this is. So this is actually okay. So you had uh, Media Tools, FFmpeg. You got Media Tools, Video Mass, Cross-Platform GUI for FFmpeg. This is kind of... Uh, a really good one and then you got uh yt dlp which replaced youtube dash dl um so that's uh that's actually pretty good i think we'll just leave that uh we'll fix this up um uh, application mismatch all right we'll push that uh was there anything else wrong with this github uh this commit let's let's just go ahead and push this and then look back at our conversion I think that should fix a lot of the problems with this PR. And alrighty, let's refresh. U YouTube DL is the new thing. YouTube Dish DL is basically abandoned where it has been for years. Yeah, that's what I thought too, Peter. Good to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Google bullying ad block user. We went into a whole rant at the beginning of the stream about YouTube. Uh, just a lot of the weirdness that they got going on, like them forcing shorts and, and mobile games and all this weird stuff into the app is just so strange, especially for desktop users. It makes it even weirder. Like there's no reason for the bad interface and, and nasty stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree. All right. So we got a do big documentation update. Uh, we have... Anaconda for VS Code here. Oh, then we gotta fix that. We got YouTube DL. All right, DLP. Uh, the other one for applications that I also see a problem with is right here. VS Code uh, is showing Anaconda three, which is incorrect. I wonder what happened here. 
So VS Code, that's fine. This should be, oop, let's go Anaconda 3. Anything else? Let's look at our problems. Do we have any other issues? Uh, That's fine. All right, those are all C spells. Yeah, I don't see any other duplicate variables. I think it was just a, a somebody fat fingered when they were doing a copy paste in into here. Let's uh update application JSON. Push that. All right, another refresh. Why we do code reviews right here? That would have been bad. All right, we got that. That looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Uh, looks like we're changing the scope of the machine. All right, that's fine. Silent program. This will actually just make it go faster uh, when doing the installs, it looks like, which is good. Limiting scopes, always a good idea. And then we have the Wikipedia that Conti's building out as well. You can see adding various uh, wiki articles. I probably should need to do a video. Once we get that built out more, I'm going to do a video on Wikipedia or GitHub wiki articles. Because it's really cool. Um, hmm. Let's go ahead and... Nah, it'll it'll self-compile and fix all these win util errors. We'll, we'll go ahead and approve this. That'll be good. All right, squash and merge. Berlin, going to try it on a VM. Yeah, watch out, Berlin. We're going to have a new uh, prefix soon. I'm working on a VM optimized tweaks uh, because there's just certain things in VM that you can just go a little bit further. So pretty soon, uh, I'll, I'm going to be doing that. I've, I've been meaning to get to it. I just haven't yet. Next NixOS stream? I don't know. I don't know on that. I'm going to take a look and see where we're at. I think the only thing we haven't touched on Nix is Flakes. Yeah, bare metal is always best. I always like bare metal when I can. Remove files application. Uh, the original is no longer via Vic Winget. What happened to files? Aw. I liked files. Anybody use files? Uh, I remember. I think it was Tech Hut that did a video on files. Uh, did really well. Files. GitHub. What happened? Looks like it's still there. Well, darn it. Okay. Let's see. I mean, it says it's missing from Winget. Search files. And what was the files dash community is where it's from. Let's see if we can spot it. Um. Yeah, it does look like it fell off of Winget, doesn't it? Well, bummer. All right. Yep. Gone. What about Coco? Does uh, chocolatey have it? Let's let's take a look. Ah, uh, I gotcha. Monk, monk listed in the. Why remove the app from Winget? What did the developer say? You just have to sideload the version. Oh, that's weird. Winget package IDs that. Huh. Oh, uh, maybe they're converting it to a Microsoft Store app. That'd be a terrible idea. Hate it when dev developers do that. Uh, it could also be Winget can be difficult, though. Oh, Winget stopped. It, it was not installing the correct dependency, so they stopped accepting packaged apps like files. Oh, that sucks. Okay. Well, goodbye, files. Thanks for the, the spotting that out, Monk. Uh, sad face. All right. Yeah, Spotify is always weird because you have to do it through like a user uh, one. All right, we got that one done. Done. All right, great. There. Done and done. Uh, so all the PRs are there. Now let's look at MicroWin specifically. Um, let's see where we're doing the, the DSM. I think it was in MicroWin Helper under the private functions. Let's take a look. Uh, let's see. We got copy, convert to, install, invoke... It was invoke microwin helper remove features here we go printing telnet client powershell 
da, da, da. This is for the Apex stuff for removing features. It's leaving all these in as far as removing packages. It's making sure to leave all of these packages in. This is all Apex garbage. I don't really care about that. Uh, leaving like Winget, that's App Installer. Wi-Fi. Let's go to the service tweaks because I think that's where most people have problems with uh, the Win, uh, micro Win. Apex is part of the Microsoft Store. Anything, so there's two types of Apex. There's provisioned Apex, which is basically system Microsoft Store apps that are built by Microsoft. And then you have regular Apex images, which are typically things that are third party that get added after the fact. Not necessarily third party. Some Microsoft stuff isn't provisioned, but it is regular Apex. Very few though. For the most part, it's third party that gets added via the Microsoft Store. I hate all Apex, just straight up. It's just a terrible system. I hate the Microsoft Store. I don't know what else to tell you other than it's just bad. Um, so it, anyways, every application I like to install, I like to go old school, should interface with directly off of the Microsoft Store. That, that That's why those options exist to remove it. Having said all that, there are certain things Microsoft Windows does now where it forces Apex upon you, and that's never fun. That's never fun. So that's that's why um, those two exist. And uh, you know, I think it's here to stay. But I would I would never be a third party developer doing Apex packages, mainly because putting yourself on the Microsoft Store now you're starting to open yourself up to well microsoft may want a piece of your pie and they can just take it think of what google has done with the play store or what apple has done with their app store uh all of those things they're taking like 30 percent of the pie why would you ever think to use the microsoft store it's it's so bad just from that perspective now some people are like well it's nice because of the convenience of the, having the microsoft store instead of opening up a web browser now to the you i say that's more why i built my whole utility it it's it uses winget it uses chocolatey there's plenty of package managers to use that are more efficient faster and just work compared to the microsoft store shenanigans uh, where you open yourself up to a whole bunch of other risks as a developer. So don't develop for the Microsoft Store. But two, uh, your apps will work worse. It just will. When you start integrating this type of stuff and how FX is, is tied into your systems and, and your user systems, it, it gets funky. It gets real funky. So uh, I'm very much a big uh, anti-Microsoft -Mac Store uh, person. Rightfully so, though. I just don't think you really should uh, use it. All right, let's go services. Where are our services? Here we go. Services to exclude uh, on the stop. Uh, I know the way... Okay, there's the wireless LAN service that was fixed um, two months ago, actually. All right, running services. Did Event Viewer make it into here? Uh, which uh, event... Yeah, Event Log and Event Systems excluded that was causing the explorer hangups uh the rest of this looks pretty good actually let's look through our issues just to see if there's anything that popped up and uh see what we got there you haven't found why the store is so problematic describe the risks of it sometime for a video yeah that's a good point peter i, I think some of it stems from how different it is from regular applications uh, just as an example, real fast, uh, typically a lot of programs get put into like program files or even that sometimes you have like program data, but how the Microsoft store does things, I want to say they put it in like a win apps folder and God bless. I can't remember its location or off the top of my head, uh, but it kind of hides it in here and it also messes with the permissions uh, for the actual storage. So some things in here it's not traditional so think of probably the best way to explain it is if you're familiar with mac at all there's an extended attribute so like how linux works is there's this unix permissions that are 
are pretty easy to understand. You know, you got read, write, execute, right? And you have uh, in that there's groups, uh, parent groups where it's like, hey, is this the owner? Is it the user uh, or user group? And then uh, finally the guest permissions, right? That's why you see like, hey, anytime you do 777, that's terrible because you're opening yourself up to all these read, write, execute privileges for anybody and everybody on the system. Don't ever use that permission. And then you add Mac onto it. Mac is like the uh, Microsoft App Store. They add all this extended permissions BS crap onto it and they hide it into your system into these other folders. I'm not sure on this analogy, but it's along the same thought process, in my opinion. Um, and I kind of want to know where the hell that is. Let me look. One second. Let's just ask GPT. Hey, where are Microsoft Store apps stored on C Drive? Yeah, the, the random names is also an issue. The C program win apps. C program files win apps. Let's see. C program files and then windows apps so it puts it in a hidden folder so let's go back windows apps i want to say ah fat fingered that one didn't i let's go back windows apps yes don't have permissions ah oh, it's denied all right fine uh windows apps let's go advanced we'll grab uh, permissions real fast um actually under those events let's just change the owner sure let's just go administrators all right uh let's just grab that i don't think this will break anything <laughs> how to break your entire windows install demonstrated by titus on stream all right let's let's try that one more time uh let's go windows apps i still don't like it oh man okay here we go uh, I, what I did was just do a take own. Uh, you can also do take own from command line as well. So you have all this extra crap in here and it stores it in these weird containers with funky permissions. And, and also Microsoft store is constantly writing these permissions out too. So like, even though I changed the ownership, that's not going to last. Give it a couple of reboots. This thing's going to be just jacked with like no other. And then, yeah. You also see there's all these different versions of different apps, but it's the same app that's installed over. So the versioning's not very good in the store either. It's just a very, I don't know, it feels like a crackhead designed this system. That's the best way to put it. That's Microsoft Store, is not Microsoft in general, but Microsoft Store especially. I just really, really dislike how they put these apps in here from just a file structure and permissions without getting into the politics behind it all. Um, it's just dirty. Um, and then you have all these weird proprietary formats on top of it and packaging. Hey, just not fun. It's just not fun. And then, you know, you have per permission, a uh, provisioned Apex, and then you have regular Apex and some are signed, some aren't signed. It's just a whole nother can of worms. I don't know. Yeah, and uh, eventually Microsoft, their whole idea behind the Microsoft Store is to take a piece of your pie. Right now, you get 100% of your pie, and when you're developing for the Microsoft Store, let's say you're just a crazy person, you're like, Titus, whatever you just did, I don't care. I'm going to figure out how to package it exactly how Microsoft wants it and then put it on their store because I think Microsoft's the best thing since canned beer. And I'm like, all right, you do you. But just don't come crying to me when they start wanting a 30% of all your profits. And also, let's say they do something like what happened earlier in the stream where uh, they just start breaking a lot of dependencies for your application. Now, all of a sudden, your installer doesn't work on Winget or, or through the Microsoft Store because, well, they changed things up and now you can't install those dependencies. Where if you package your own installer, you could. I don't know. Ugh. I'm, I'm, I'm done with this rant. <laughs> uh, there's just so many bad things with the Microsoft Store. I think we could sit here. I think we have sat here for 30 minutes ranting about it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did forget about DWM Win32. Here, let's try this out. And then maybe if we got time, we can try some DWM on Windows. Because that was cool. Uh, let's see. What are my stars? 
uh, I didn't even show this to Peter. Uh, DWM ported into Windows. That's kind of cool. <laughs> they even have a build command. How wild is this? I wonder how to patch it. I think the patch would probably be interesting. And you might not need to patch it, actually. Because you'd still have the whole GUI and everything behind it. It's kind of wild. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's pretty cool, though. I, I looked at this and I was like, ooh. I need to I need to look at that. Toggles bar on and off. Uh, you got Windows E. Toggles Windows Explorer taskbar on and off. Sets tiling, floating, monocle. Mod control space between current and previous layout. Uh-huh. I don't know. We'll have to try out that. I'm always for window managers. You know me. I love them. Especially DWM in my Linux installs. But who in Windows? That's going to be interesting. Uh, I do have... It looks like the last commit was four months ago. So not as active as I'd like. But, eh, you know, if it works, it works. It'd be interesting to see. Anywho, let's uh, make this... ISO real fast while we are sitting here. I think we need to download Windows, actually. Because Windows, I think, is 23H2 now, and I don't think I ever downloaded that. Uh, let's just grab the ISO image. I like that Microsoft's actually allowing you to download ISOs now without having to do, like, the media creation tool. Which is funny, because I just used to set it to say I was on Linux. <laughs> yeah, 23H2 is what it is now. Glaze window manager. I'll have to check that out, Monk. Yeah, Kermambi has been around for a while. Is that pretty active, Phoenix? Let's see. Uh, Karimbi. I, I'm saying that's all kinds of jacked up. Uh, Karimbi window manager. There we go. Got close enough. Yeah, look at this. This is super active. That's cool. Yeah, I probably would go with something like this if I was going to do a window manager. Let's see the uh, the test here. All right, we got starting the process. Okay, not bad. Kind of kind of has some Hyperland vibes. Although I will say, good night, bro. This padding you got on your windows is excessive. It's a lot of wasted real estate. Just, just my thought. My thoughts. And the rounded corners. Ah, I'm not a huge fan of the rounded corners. But I think all that can be probably toggleable. Uh, let's try this one. See what this one looks like. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Not as fast as DWM on Linux. Well, it's it's never going to be as fast as that. Who are we kidding? We got... How, how much... Let's, let's see. Let's just see. I've, I've, Peter taught me here, but... Look at this. We are using a whopping 7.8 gigs right now. And mind you, all I have open is Chatterino, Terminal. <laughs> Good night. I need, to, I need to get that memory put in. Oh, man. Oh, gosh. I keep forgetting. I, I use Linux, so I never worry about my memory. But when I'm in Windows, 16 ain't cutting it. Look at that. Ouch. Ew. That hurts. That hurts. Mac, thanks for the prime. Ah, good to hear, Ad. Uh, I, I, I still love developing for that utility. Every time I'm in Windows, there's always something that pops up. I'm like, God, why'd they do this? All right, we got to fix it. <laughs> yeah, eight gigs, man. It's wild totally wild i do have a lot of uh, chromium instances uh, we can clean this up a little bit there's optimizations you can do with chromium and i do have a pretty extensive uh uh list here where we're constantly hitting these guys i could probably take out like checker and google calendar rss feed mm, i kind of want to leave the rest though that should be fine all right glaze wm i'll have to check that out all right, well, I think we've downloaded officially the 23H2. Let's launch this customizer install. Grab this and 
push out uh, a new MicroWin instance. We'll just select the ISO, downloads, bam. It'll mount it in the background. Rust is faster than C. Well, it depends. I think it's, I think Rust is a lot easier for newer developers for sure. But at the end of the day, it depends on your developer. And the final product can look very different depending on how comfortable they are. Is your Windows running on virtual machine? It is not. Been a while since I actually uh, did that. Oh, do we have some errors in the background? Okay. Oh, what do we have? Virtual disk supported. Uh, not specified. Oh, sad face. Okay. I think, uh, I don't think it's grabbing it. Hmm. I think we have problems with the invoke WPF get ISO. Let's look at mount disk image as well. Virtual disk support file provider not for file was not found. Okay. Let's go to mount disk image. Huh. All right. Let's uh, look. There's our ISO. Don't see any problems here. Let's just close others. No problems. And virtual disk support provider, not for the specified file, not found. Hmm. Well, let's see what uh, old GPT says. Let's go new. Let's see if it can fix stuff. Fix. Uh, let's grab that one air. Just like stretching its legs, seeing what it likes to say. It's kind of fun. Okay, so write host file path. Let's see. Write host file path. Check if is the right format. So basically, we're taking all of this. And we're going to be replacing just this section before doing the try catch over here for the mounting. Um, and then if we look at what that changes, you can see it's double checking to see if the file format is correct. So it's looking for ISO, VHD, or VHDX. Frankly, this probably won't fix it just because I know it's an ISO format. Uh, I'm kind of curious, though. Let's see what it does. Not bad having this check in here. Let's close this. I did not get this same error. Oh, okay, Monk. Interesting. Well, let's. I'm just going to add this check in here anyways. It's probably good just to have. Doesn't hurt anything. Let's do a compile. Uh, and we'll manually launch. It could also be IRM being launched through the web. I'm kind of curious to see that looks like okay same issue that makes sense now os is on system still not finding it hmm that is interesting yeah i need to set up mpv and a lot more hotkeys there peter for sure hmm so for whatever reason it's not able it doesn't look like it's grabbing well, there's the ISO right here. So file path does look correct. It just doesn't like something in my path. We're using the subscribe user. Huh. Virtual disk support provider. Not for not found. Yeah, let's try to mount it manually. Maybe it was corrupt. Might just have a corrupt ISO on the download. Possible. So we'll just go mount. Um, oh, that's weird. Usually, I, uh, usually there's a mount. Let's just open it with Explorer. Problem mounting the file. Hmm. Yeah, I, it, it just, I think it might be just a corrupt ISO. I wasn't really paying attention. Um, let's just open as archive. Let's see if pzip can open it. Yeah, pzip opens it. Hmm. I don't think a redownload is going to fix it. I mean, we can try redownloading because pzip is seeing this as an archive. Let's grab a file out of it just to make sure. So let's say we we're grabbing. Let's just go to sources. There's the most of it. Like the main file in here that we want is like install.wim. But uh, 
let's just grab like the alert gif and see if that pulls up and refresh no extract okay there's alert gift okay yeah so it does it still has the the gif over here hmm i think i did something when i did explorer patcher that broke some of my mounting so let's let's just do a this happens from time to time when you're on a system for so long i bet you i bet you we got some issues here let's just go into settings let's just go with the uh, cumulative updates i'm kind of curious to see where this goes if this still doesn't work on the mount just the mounting it with windows explorer then we need to probably do a dism restore health uh, or a sfc scan now because we i i did something to screw up my stock install wouldn't be the first time yeah i don't think it's a hash or an integrity check i'm pretty sure it's not corrupt oh my god that's a blast from the past you guys remember demon tools oh man i remember that gosh yep yep it's a chris issue on the iso yeah i, I remember gosh i was downloading i remember the old days of uh a lot of burning dvds and stuff and copying dvds i think i was using a lot of daemon tools for that because it could read a lot of uh drm protected content i think it was for games too because almost all the games came on dvds it's really easy to copy games because the drm a lot of times was contained and uh just having standard copiers fail but daemon tools would do a pretty good job with uh, getting around it What kind of uh, music do you listen to? Uh, usually pretty chill music. I kind of like uh, even old school like 90s music like Dave Matthews I'm good with. Damon. Yeah. Demon. Damon. <laughs> potato. Potato. Uh, such is life. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. That's looking fine there. Let's go to downloads. We're going to try and... Uh, just seeing if there's a mount option usually there is i i've messed with my my thing so much okay that's working okay good we don't have to do a dism repair yay let's just eject this eject all right gravy we're, we're in business back to it oh, i was just a little little brain fart on my side when you till and let's launch that bad boy and now we shouldn't have errors on this side let's let's just find out shall we yes there we go perfect oh your settings don't allow to send a tar archive uh oh how are you trying to send it email or text okay uh keep edge keep defender I'm going to just go ahead and keep those packages as well. I think we're good. Let's just start the process. And we'll throw this on here. We'll call this micro win. Save. Um, oh, I forgot to change it to pro. My bad. Probably should cancel this. Oh, a tar archive. I got gotcha. you. I'm going to make a new image after this completes. Uh, since we're not moving the uh, Apex stuff, I'm just left it all as default. We could make another one, call it MicroWin-Pro. So we'll, we'll make two ISOs here. While you're waiting, check out issue 1409. All right, let's see what we got. All right, application installs added sil uh, silently continue as a package name. Huh, really? Silently continue is usually an option that gets added when doing a like a app install so what's going on there uh let's take a look at application install it's gonna be a lot on silently continue so you got edge removal progress 
suppress progress bar. Okay, yeah. Error action. Error action preference. Error action. Tweaks. Let's make sure we got all those. I don't see any issue there. Edge. Um, no. NT Light's still better, Razzle, right now. Uh, MicroWind's not nearly as polished. We just added it, and there's still a lot of work to be done. It gets you there, or it should get you there. Let's see. Is it done yet? We're, we're just doing some testing right now. Just looking at another issue while that finishes. All these error actions look fine. Ooh, this right here. Get scheduled task error action. Well, let's verify syntax on that. PowerShell, what is get scheduled task? Stop, continue, silently continue. Get error action. It's a dash error action. And you use dash EA for shorthand. Yeah, I mean, that's technically correct. <sighs> Nikki, thanks for the tier one. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much that's what we're trying to do. All right, so we have our micro win now. Let's uh, select the ISO again. This time, we're going to change it up a bit. We're going to go with the uh, pro. And we'll go ahead and strip out the Apex packages just to see what that looks like. <laughs> Good to hear, Nikki. Yeah, I need to be... I, I, I have this big Linux video I'm working on right now. It's going to take probably a month to produce, though. I'm going to have to put probably two, three hundred hours into it. There's going to be a lot of content I cover on that next one. I want to, I want to make a massive video. <laughs> uh, it'll be fun. All right, check UI for next steps. We're going to change this to Pro. We're going to go ahead and strip out our Apex. And we're going to start that. And we're going to call this one Micro Win Dash Pro. All right, there we go. All right. I also needed to change something on uh, Micro Win. People that were using Windows 10, uh, some of the versions of Windows 10 uses an ESD file, which is uh, basically another compression on WIM. It's like a, it's like putting a zip file in a zip file, and that's what Microsoft did for a lot of the Windows 10 ISOs. And I need a, uh, there, there's a command you can run to convert ESD, remove the WIM, and then do it. But it's a bit little more, a little bit more going on with that. Should probably save that for another day. Uh, you can you can use anything to you can inject any driver there, Muhammad. Uh, Gentoo, why is it hated or talked about? Uh, Gentoo is an amazing distro. It really is. It, it can you can compile anything, but the I think why people always hate on it or love it is it's like a it's like a tinkerer's distro, meaning you can do anything in it, but you have to know how to compile it and. You can also customize it to almost greater than any distro as well because you you build like your own custom Linux kernel. So you can choose things to leave out of the kernel. You can put more things into the kernel. There's a lot of different options. So really love it, hate it. Gentoo's there because of the complexity, but also because of the customization. So, so most of the Gentoo hate or love comes from complexity and customization because... It's, it really is an amazing distro in in both regards. Yeah, it's like the dad of Arch. I think that's perfect. I think that's a, that's probably you nailed it. Hit it right on the nose. It's like uh, the dad of Arch. I love that. I'm going to steal that. Maybe even the granddad of Arch. <laughs> uh, pretty soon people are going to be running around and go, I use Gentoo, by the way. Which, honestly, that already is kind of a thing for the 10 people out there that use Gentoo. Slackware is the dad of Linux. Uh, Slackware is, I think, the oldest running distro uh, that's still made today. I, I think it's one of the first, if if not the first, uh, that has, is still currently in production or currently getting releases. Okay, sweet, Peter. I'll check that out. 
All right, so we have that. Um, network error. Oh, that's fine. Didn't tell me what I wanted to hear anyways. I don't know what's up with this one. I don't see anything in here. It's like, hey, new item type, new property type, copy. Wouldn't be anything like that. It would have to be an add app provision package kind of thing. I don't see anything that's like misspelling of error action. Actual value, get item property. No, that's fine. I don't see anything there. This is just an undo all. What about warning action? That's interesting. That's just for stop service. It shouldn't really matter. And most of this, I think, looks commented out. Yeah, this is all commented out anyways. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, invoke script. That's fine. Yeah, and then you... Hmm. I don't know how to exclude this for the invoke scripts, but... Because the escapes go from backslashes to these, uh, uh, I forget what those, those that escape character is called. Not a hyphen, but uh, I don't know. Let's see what this is. All right. I don't know. I'm stumped on that one. I'll have to come back to it. All righty. Well, let's just close. Close all. Come back to here. It's fine. Archon, thanks for the, the tier one. Yeah, let me see. While we're waiting, we can check out Peter's MPV script. I think these are just the files included with it. Uh, tar is like a zip file for Linux. Let's just try that bad boy out. Um, Let's get to some Linux. Old Ubuntu. It's the devil. All right. Ah. Oh, that's right. I think it's like CD. What do they make it? It's this weird path for WSL. All right, there we go. Perfect. Uh, uh, MPV. Uh, so let's see. You got an input. And I think we have M M MPV on here, don't we? Okay, we got to remove that bell. That's going to just drive me up a wall. Where's that setting? Error. Where's the bell? Whoever thought adding a bell every time you type one more character more than uh, than is needed should be shot. All right, let's see. Who thought that was a good idea? Uh... Da, da, da. Where are you at? Maybe it's your default. <clears throat> okay. Bell notification style. No. None. All right. Profile termination behavior. Automatic. Anything else? I don't see anything else. I think we're fine. All right. Cool. So we should. Uh, I imagine this would just go into like. Maybe we need to close and restart Windows errors. All right. Okay, no no bell this time around. All right, fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Exit, I got rid of the, the chat bot. I always get tired of getting spammed. Just add them for functionality by adding the script to your desk. Hey, Sparky, how's it going? Script to your directory. Uh, it would just go into .conf, wouldn't it? So, like, I, actually, I probably should be able to just take... Well, it's just copy him and T C. Oh, there's a stupid bell again. Why is that the default behavior? What are you doing to me? No. Where's PowerShell? PowerShell core, PowerShell regular. Ah. All right. No. Take you off. Uh, what was it, Ubuntu? Okay, we're fine. Okay. Now, no bell. I think it was just users. Uh, MPV. Yeah. Grab. Ooh, actually, let's just copy MPV over here. And 
let's just do a dash R. So we have MPV over here. Let's move MPV into dot config. Uh, let's just grab the directory though. Yeah. So now if I go MPV and I have like something in my downloads folder, uh, we'd be able to play it. Sweet. I'll have to look at this a little bit more when I got a little more time. All right. So we've got, uh, did we make our directory? Is this done? Let's see. I think we're still working on the unmount, aren't we? It's taking a little bit. No, I don't see it mounted anymore. Yeah, here it goes. All right, we're right at the end. Yeah, I can totally see that. Honestly, I like working from CLI if I can. No matter what system I'm on, it just CLI is just so much easier um, a lot of times than having to do the clicking into folders and different GUI type settings. I really do enjoy the CLI a lot. All right, so we got our Pro. Let's try and do a quick install, see what this looks like see what this looks like how's our explorer i remember last time we tried this our explorer was all kinds of jacked up <laughs> so i'm thinking micro wins quite a bit more on the way this this time around all right this was the last home test we had we're gonna go ahead and just remove remove we'll create a new virtual machine dude i need to get that memory going <laughs> Uh, all right, we're gonna go Microwind Pro. Where is it? Where's my Microwind Pro? Uh oh, where did where oh, where did it save it? Oh, I put it on the desktop. Okay, thank you. Thanks, chat. Save the day. There it is. Yay. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go. We're gonna call this Microwind Pro. Let's see how well this thing works. Uh, we'll generate our EFI. Uh, disk size 64. That's fine. Let's customize our hardware a little bit. Uh, virtual machine. Let's ramp that up. We'll give it like 6 gigs. I need to get more memory. I keep forgetting to send in. Keep forgetting to send in my other 16 gig stick. One of these days, one of these days, I'll get there. Uh, processors, we're going to go one. We're going to go with six cores. That should be fine. Hit close and finish. Not the best settings, but should be sufficient. You pay 90 to $100 to have early access to a game, but you're cheap with hardware. It's funny. True story. It's true. I don't know why I'm like that. We all have our, our personality flaws. I think that is mine. <laughs> Priorities. I, there's, there's a part of me that just likes to MacGyver stuff up, though. You know? Like, oh, I got really crappy hardware. Let's, let's do it. Let's try and make this work with this pile of garbage. There's something about it I love. VMware and VirtualBox is the same? Absolutely not. Not even close to being the same. VMware is a professional product. VirtualBox is not. VirtualBox is made by Oracle. I'd say it's more user-friendly starting off, and it's free, which is good. But I would say VMware is much more performant. You have a lot more options. And it costs a hell of a lot of money. I think it's like... I don't know. It's been a while since I bought my uh, Workstation Pro, but I think I paid $200 or $300 for Workstation Pro. Mathis, thanks for the Tier 1, man. Subscribe for seven months. All right. It's hard to believe, man, but I've almost been streaming consistently every week for uh, almost eight months now. I think it has been eight months. Man, pretty soon people are going to start calling me a streamer. <laughs> uh... Yeah, there is a, a, a VMware player. I don't particularly like VMware player. I kind of like uh, Workstation Pro better, but uh, player will get you there. I just don't think you can quite uh, manipulate as well. <laughs> Instead of memer. <laughs> you spun up a bunch of VMs uh, to do your work, right? Yep, yep, yep. I'm setting up a QMU VM so I can use VS Code. 
can't use Codium instead of Microsoft extensions. Okay, yep. Any thoughts about developing inside of a VM like this? Yeah, it should be fine, Prof. I used uh, QMU extensively. Every Windows video I made for pretty much all of 2022 and some of 2023 was done inside of a, a VM and using Q QMU, which is all free on Linux. I was also using PCI pass-through during those days too, which I've already touched on. I love PCI pass-through. Definitely will return to it once I have hardware to do such uh, because it's fun. Uh, but anytime I needed Windows, I could just be like, spin up, do all my work. It'd be almost as if it's bare metal because I was passing through. I, I had three pass-throughs going for that. I was passing through a PCIe USB card. I was passing through a GPU and I was passing through a hard drive. So I was passing through three different hardware pieces into that QMU box for my Windows. Very little of it was actually virtualized when you look at it. A lot of times it was just using virtual processors and uh, some of the memory sharing, but that's why no one could ever know like, hey, he's in a VM, but damn, this performance is awesome. Like most people didn't realize it was even a VM. Uh, even when you go to like device manager, you're still seeing all that hardware to where it's not just, you know, QMU virtual devices. Uh, and that's where I think the, if you really are spending a lot of time in your virtual machines, you definitely hundred percent should be passing through a lot of those things I talked about at the very least the hard drive, um, other stuff that's up to you, but, but I personally like to pass through all three of those things. And then use Looking Glass as the front end to QMU or the PCI pass through. And man, it's a pretty sweet setup. I, I'm not gonna lie, that's a pretty sweet sweat setup. It's just kind of a pain in the butt to get set up. But once it's set up, like I said, I ran it for quite some time and it was beautiful. Loved it. You think they'll make Windows 12 Enterprise just gaming since Microsoft? I don't know. I don't think Microsoft's so out of touch with a lot of the gaming community and gamers in general that I'm kind of like, I don't know. SRIOV for Nix is usually easier to set up than virtual bridge networking faster. Oh, really? You know, I don't think I've ever used SRIOV for Nix. That's a good one. I'll have to check that out. Bread, that's a good, uh, good idea. I really am waiting for SRIOV to become mainstream for GPOs so we can properly carve up one GPU because, man, I'd love to carve up that 7800 XT in the back. I'm not going to use that most instances unless I'm rendering like a video for uh, YouTube or something. Most times I don't. Buy a new Ryzen CPU integrated graphics now. Yeah, yeah, I, I've noticed that. Uh, I was kind of holding out to see what the new Intel line has in store because they're supposed to put up to 32 G, uh, processor cores on it, actual graphics processing cores on the new integrated Intel. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, we'll see if that actually happens, though, because right now I think the integrated graphics on the AMD chipsets are only eight cores uh, for some of the more powerful APUs. I ended up buying the 7800 XT, not the 7900. And I got to say that 7800, chef's kiss. So much better than the 5700 XT I had. That 5700 XT was kind of hot garbage. And, you know, I kind of went back and forth whether or not to do NVIDIA or AMD when I did the upgrade. But inevitably, I was like, you know you're going to be using Linux a bunch. And every single time I do NVIDIA on Linux, it's not that it won't work. It's just that it's just such a bigger headache than when I just use AMD. So... For me, it was like, okay, forget AM NVIDIA. Let's just do the AMD. Hopefully, the 7000 series is a lot better. And it was. It it kills. It, it blows my 2060 out of the water inside. Yeah, I mean, 5700 XT, I think it's just fine. It's fine now, but it's not a great GPU. It's a cheap GPU, but it's, it's still not something I'd recommend to folks. It's worth 100 bucks though. And you get a good hundred dollars, a couple hundred dollars of value out of it. It's just uh, not, still not a great GPU, I would say. Like going from that to a 7800, my word, talk about a world of difference, huge difference. Yeah, I, I think Faye will do, let's do tiling windows. 
tiling windows and windows. We could make that Thursday stream. Maybe I'll do a, like a poll on uh, on Discord or something. The added cash is great for gaming. Yeah, yeah. I think that was it. The seventy was it seventy eight hundred X three D CPU is the best one. But I mean, I don't really do a lot of modern gaming. Most of my gaming's pretty old school. I don't really go with a lot of the first uh, AAA titles and such like that. I have a hard time with a lot of modern gaming, to be honest. I do love gaming, just not a lot of the more modern stuff. Although, you know, I really loved Elden Ring, and I know their expansion's coming out this next month. So I probably will, I probably will be doing some Elden Ring coming up. Uh, once the new expansion launches for Elden Ring, I loved that one. It was one of the very few modern games I really enjoyed. How is the AI for... Uh, if you're doing AI, you almost have to do NVIDIA. Uh, when you go into, like, stable diffusion and stuff, it's gotten better, mind you, but it's still... I think NVIDIA still has kind of the market on the... On the, on the AI stuff, such as stable diffusion and such. Which uh, 7800 XT did I get? I got the Sapphire. I got that exact same one. The Sapphire Nitro Plus. I think I had it on sale at Micro Center for, I want to say like six or seven hundred bucks. It's really good, really good deal. My forty ninety mobile constantly freezes in Linux. Uh, yeah, they'll fix it eventually. Like I said, you just gotta wait for the Nvidia drivers. And the open source stuff's still not quite there, even with all the leaked source code for Nvidia. Maybe, maybe in the future it will be. Ow! 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 No! I don't know what happened. All right. Still working on a few things. Almost there. Thanks for the update, Microsoft. Yeah, I probably should get a new chair. This chair's okay. My word. Uh, is anybody timing this? I don't know. I think we started at 30. We're like 12 minutes in. 100% complete. Please wait. It's typical Microsoft for you. Uh, yeah, Herman Miller is what I really should get. I've, I've never heard someone get a Herman Miller chair and say it's not a great chair. I just need to pony up. But you know how cheap I am. I'm always like, yeah, maybe I can go a little cheaper here. But as much sitting as I do, I really need to not cheap out on my chair. Bought mine used for 1600 Holy crap. Yeah. That could make the scene now. This is actually probably a good idea, Sparky. Not a bad idea. I think I can go up into the next... Yeah, there we go. Still working on a few things. I'm working on a scene for OBS while we're sitting here. Oh, I think I got it right there. Potentially dangerous download. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, don't worry, I'm working on something special here. Sparky just reminded me of something. So while we're waiting on Windows to load, I am getting this thing set up. Good Lord, Windows, what are you doing? Few things. You sit on a throne of lies. Pay no attention to that. Uh, hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll just grab that. Uh huh. One second. Ah, uh, let's go. Ah. Hmm. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh huh. Oh. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that handsome fellow over there. Ah. <laughs> uh, oh, I'll, I'll clean it up a little bit here. <laughs> Thanks, Sparky, for the, 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 the theme. Uh, let's see. I'm going to rename this. Yes. Uh, loading. Yes. And then... Figure this guy. Microsoft's still working on a few things as well, so we've got time. Uh, prompter. 
Like, what am I ever going to use that? Let's just make a source and source visualization. Nope. This video shows how that Intel is much less efficient node than what TSMC makes. Wow. In performance, do you think uh, best Florp or normal Firefox? I think performance-wise, normal Firefox with uh, with the script. God, I can't remember the script for, for Firefox. There's a debloat script for Firefox that you can run, and I think that would probably be the best performance. Florp's more of a privacy or security style browser running on ESR, so it doesn't have a lot of the optimizations that normal Firefox would have. But normal Firefox still has a lot of bloat, so you kind of need to do normal Firefox with like a debloated script. Uh, better Fox, yeah. Or Firefox fire, privacy, unpunished. Both those would be great. Um, I, haven't, I haven't extensively tested either one, so I can't recommend one or the other. But I definitely would recommend one of those to go partner with a normal Firefox install. I feel like that would be the best. Uh, source visibility... Uh, loading and green twitch chris loading yes perfect all right so then when i'm done breaking something i can just do this aha and then i can bring it back ah perfect yeah libre wolf um has been out for a while I haven't really used it enough to really give any kind of judgment either way. This install has gone fantastic, guys. Look at this wonderful cursor I have. It's uh, slowly getting there. Load. So how much of the processor is it, are we using here? Let's just go uh, Control-Alt, I think it is. Alright, now control shift escape. What are we looking at? What are we looking at? Lordy, I need to get more memory. I keep saying it. I keep needing to do it. What are my page files set it at? Set it. <laughs> what are my page files set at? I don't see page file on here. Uh committed 23 gigs. Damn, is my page file 23 gigs? Dang, that seems excessive. Let's go sysdm.cpl. Let's oh, let's see what my page file set at. Uh, currently allocated <laughs> about eight gigs on my page file. Okay, system manage right now. Not great. Probably probably should do optimization, increase the page file size, and maybe that. Don't buy memory until you get a new system. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Well, I have the memory. I just need to send it in. Corsair has a lifetime license on their memory, so I just need to send it in. Oh, come on. Is this going to boot? Oh, let's see. Can we do... Uh... Oh, there it goes. All right. Good night. Need to optimize my virtual machine settings on this as well. All right, let's first check our Internet Explorer. Okay, that's working. So that's good. Um, what's the stock settings on this? <laughs> yeah, that was the longest Windows installation ever. Agreed. Yeah, I'm getting uh, bottlenecked because I only have, geez, six gigs allocated to this instance. Once Task Manager finally pulls up here, we'll be able to showcase my lack of memory. <laughs> but we'll get there eventually yeah i still remember doing an upgrade on a system going from uh xp to vista if you guys remember those upgrades lordy talk about long you'd be sitting there for two three hours doing an upgrade just to have a, a completely bloated nasty system at the end of it i think i only did it a couple times but those couple times were probably the most painful upgrades i've ever done in my life so highly recommend never doing that again. 
because XP went from having like, I mean, a deep bloated XP you could get down into almost single digits for processor count. And Vista was a considerably heavier uh, system back in the day. I daily drive with Liberty Wolf. It's basically debloated Firefox with uBlock and some privacy stuff. Now that's cool. Strict anti-tracking. Resistant fingerprinting. I, I could see that. All right, come on. Did did we? I thought we clicked that task manager. Is it not? I think I think it's launching task manager. It's going to launch like fifty task managers all at once. Let's just try to bring up a system like a. Uh, what's the services look like? No. I mean, this works. So, it's not launching any uh, any system panels. Great. And we also don't have any uh, network. I think we need to slipstream some network drivers in here and change this up as well. It not having proper network drivers is problematic. So, I probably would add... Uh, a download into the ISO for injecting those drivers. Hmm. Probably will self-host that and then pull those in. I'm thinking of just how to do it automatically for people. It's not having network drivers with the ISO is just beyond insanity because you can get almost every single network driver for Windows bundled into an ISO for about 100 megs. Uh, so there's no reason not to do that. I think that's the next big thing we do here. Just my thought. Just my thought. Yeah, so MicroWin Pro ISO at the end of it. I, I, I feel like we still have a lot of work to do here. Um, let's see. Uh, Control-Alt-Tab. Let's close that. But, yeah, I think um, the next addition I need to make is that ISO. Make it really functional. So it'll have network drivers built in. Also, probably do some type of VMware option or a VM option for QMU and VMware. So it'll grab those drivers. Because if you don't have optimized drivers, then you run into this type of 20-minute, 20 25-minute install. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, all that could be fixed as well. Um, yeah, maybe do an SDI tool origin and then just grab the rest. I agree with that, Sparky. I think that's a good idea. I, but I, I we need to make a better ISO for sure. The MicroWind stock ISO is just not... It's de-bloated and it's fine, but there's a, still a lot of bugs going around on it. So I still don't want to push it until I fix a lot of those uh, issues to where sysadmins just can use it on a whole bunch of installs. Right now, I would not recommend that, though. Right now, I think, honestly, still creating and slipstreaming your own. Uh, if you do use MicroWin, obviously, do inject network drivers into it. That's absolutely key. And, yeah, I still need to dump probably another 20 or 30 hours into MicroWin. I'll probably do a lot of that offline just because it's kind of boring. <laughs> if I'm going to be honest, I don't really want to stream making that just because it's boring. And I'm going to be bored. I actually like to be somewhat entertaining and you'll just, you'll just slowly see like on a, there'll be like a 20 hour stream of micro and it'd just be like my soul leaving my body slowly over the course of 20 hours. <laughs> There's still some entertainment value to that, but probably not, probably not the best. Oh man. Ugh. Yeah, it works fine on virtual box. Yeah. VMware, obviously we still need to load up some drivers. We could, we could load up, uh, pull in the VMware tools just through the tool, the menu there. I just want to make it a little bit easier for folks, though, because I, I feel like that ISO should have a little bit more going for it, for sure. Uh, I haven't really made a video specifically. I've mentioned MicroWin in several videos, and I, I probably have a couple coming up that I'll mention it as well, but I haven't really done an in-depth video on it because I don't want to advertise it too much yet because it's still rough around the edges and i kind of want more polish going on to micro win uh so it truly could be like a uh alternative to like an nt light for making a a micro windows install is, is really the uh, gist of it and uh, there's just a few things i need to change optimizations to make to make it uh more universal 
it, it, it's a great start and i really appreciate it conti is the one that actually programmed up microwin and i just need to kind of put uh, a little more polish on it and then get it out and then i'll probably do a video on microwin once once i get the iso exactly perfect where it'll install on bare metal install on pretty much any virtual machine and then also just kind of remain lightweight so you could use it on pretty much anything uh no it doesn't really do anything more than a month ago N nothing really low bro there's some fixes like we, we have explorer working now <laughs> windows explorer <laughs> it no longer crashes on startup that was a bug in the beginning uh dealing with like the event viewer service getting stopped and some other uh minor shenanigans but uh the rest of it yeah there's there's not that much difference between them all i had vfio drivers i agree uh, the balloon driver and some of the VMware stuff, obviously, I think would be good as well. Yeah, there's just a lot of a uh, lot of things we can do to make make things better for sure, guys. Yeah, I I think on the next system I get, I'm definitely gonna go pretty high on the core count, just because I do a lot of virtualization. And to if I wanted to go back to like PCI pass through. I really need to do something better than what I'm doing now. I think we really need to ramp up and uh, do a better job on bundling stuff in, but also uh, to really run multiple VMs. I, I need more, more cores, more memory. I want to go up to probably 64 gigs of memory, and I would say no less than probably 12 um realistically probably 16 cores that have hyper threading or some type of thread at least two threads per core and that way i'd have like 32 virtual processors that would be ideal yeah so that's just my thought process i i feel like i didn't do anything this stream but hopefully we got some some stuff done can't really think of anything offhand but I'll review it back. <laughs> At the very least, we had some fun chat. Some fun chitter chatter. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right, Sparky. We got the theme. We got we got the, the, the loading theme. Awesome. Success. <laughs> yeah, something got broken. Successful stream. Uh, that's just how it goes, though. You know, I think a lot of people think that it, it's weird when you're working on projects and different things. Sometimes it feels like you just move a mountain an entire day. You know, you just get so much done. And then other days, like today, we spend like two hours and I feel like I got absolutely nothing done. Um, and that's just, that's just life. Sometimes that happens. Uh, I did look at my CO2 count. I wish I could tell you that that was part of it, but I'm actually in the green. So it's just me not having an on day and i didn't break anything today i didn't break anything today that's right everything just worked see that's what happens you never get progress when something doesn't break you gotta break stuff <laughs> oh geez yeah but it was a lot of fun chat man there's a lot of fun chat i will say looking back over when i edit this stream seeing all the chat that happened today there's so many interesting topics and some stuff i missed in chat as always you know me i can read chat about 20 percent of the time but i did i kept looking over and i'm like oh man that sounds like a good topic but i'd be on a certain thing on his screen so maybe i couldn't address it at the time but i am going to look forward to looking back over chat and uh i think thursday's stream i don't want to do micro win uh i'll probably just do the rest of that offline just because that's more work business kind of stuff and it not it's kind of boring um so probably the next one i kind of want to tackle some window managers and windows can we make it like window manager and windows i have two monitors here one's off screen so you can't see it but the ones that we see right here is right right there i wonder to see how like uh Carmambi or we could look at dwm we could look at uh, those other windows based managers i kind of want to try that out for thursday so maybe like a window manager theme on thursday what do you guys think i think that's what we'll do that's uh that's a fun one so yeah i, th I think that'll be a good thursday text tech video we'll we'll try it out 
But all right, guys, I'm out of here. I got to get to, uh, I got to work out. It's freezing outside, and I'm gonna go about to go outside and work out. I don't want to leave. I just kind of want to sit here and chat and not do anything. Be lazy. But I'm gonna get it. We're gonna we're gonna go. I'm gonna go work out just right now, but I don't want to. But I have to. Later all. Gotta get it. I'm gonna go freeze my ass off. That's gonna be fun.